On the subject of weather, the winter season can present its share of challenges for agriculture, especially for those with livestock. Cold and icy conditions amount to just another day at the office for ranchers with hungry cattle. But delivering food is only one concern. Water presents its own set of challenges. Well, this has been a great year of uh, understanding why it's such a problem to go out and chop ice every day, sometimes twice a day. We've had two big freeze ups here before the first of the year, and a lot of people spend a lot of time chopping ice. Still, it's important to address frozen water sources because cattle need more than you might think. The rule of thumb that, that's easy to remember is about uh, one gallon per 100 pounds of body weight in cows and calves, and that's cows that are, are dry or not lactating, gestating cows, uh, up to about two gallons of water per 100 pounds of body weight if they if they're are lactating. So obviously body weight is a big factor that influences our water requirements. Um, and the other one is temperature. So the cooler it is, the less water they consume, the hotter it is, the more they need. Um, the same goes with lactation. If they're, if they're not producing milk, their water needs are lower. If they give 10 or 20 pounds of milk, their water needs are intermediate. If, if it's a cow that may give 30 pounds of milk at peak lactation, they're going to be at the very high end, which is, and it's a warm summer day, they're going to be closer to two gallons of water per 100 pounds of body weight. So, so real simply, uh, a dry cow or a gestating cow um, on a cool day in the winter time is going to consume about 12 gallons of water. Real hot day in the summer, a uh, cow that's given 30 pounds of milk, she's going to consume closer to 24 gallons of water if she weighs 1,200 pounds. So just kind of a real simple way to, um, to gauge how much water cattle need. If cattle are not getting enough water, how does that translate in terms of their forage needs? Well, it's very closely associated with forage intake. And so, you know, if they're restricted for any reason, whether, you know, the pond is frozen over or, or the water line is broken or the electric fence is in the wrong place or electrifying the water and they just can't drink, uh, the pond's gone dry. No matter what has happened, uh, their forage consumption is going to go down and the more it's restricted the more it declines and so you'd expect their performance uh, to to go down if it's if it's uh, slightly restricted over a long period of time if it's drastically restricted over a short period of time you know you're going to have health issues and, and dehydration and so on so obviously critically important in terms of water sources and, and what options producers choose to set up, it depends on their operation and really where they are in the state. Yeah, it's extremely variable. Um, and, you know, and, and you could, you know, they're low input, low cost systems to very expensive, more elaborate systems. And so, yes, I, I think that's a good way to look at it. It's very much uh, dependent on the area of the state because in western Oklahoma, you know, you're primarily talking about a windmill and a, and a large tank. In central Oklahoma here, we're talking about maybe a rural water source or um, a lake or a pond. In eastern Oklahoma, you've got about all the options where there's more uh, surface water available, lakes, ponds, um, rural water, and so on. Those with ponds have several options for maintaining access. On a pond like this, where the cattle have access to the whole pond, one of the things you could do would be fence most of it out and then make an area that uh, you could harden it up with some three inch rock or some other things and make just a single access point and make it a hard surface so that they don't have a problem getting in there. Uh, you could spend more money, this dam actually needs to be redone, you could go in and actually put a freeze proof tank below the pond. Uh, that's a lot more work and a lot more expense. The upside, however, is a much lower risk of cattle injury at the pond and no need to chop ice. Normally these ponds, the, uh, the drawdown on these freeze-proof tanks is probably eight feet under the water in most ponds, so uh, that water's gonna be a little warmer, plus it's flowing through that tank and it will not freeze. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link we've set up at sunup.okstate.edu.